today we have uh, Mr. Keith Hawkins. He is the uh, chair of the LSU Ag Center Facility in Bulgar Parish. And uh, he's going to be talking to us on beekeeping. Sure, we're going to enjoy. Well, thank you, Keith. Uh, I, I'm Keith Hawkins. I'm the, well, the way the Ag Center's been going through change is I wear several hats. I'm, I'm, I start off as a county agent doing forestry and agriculture. Um, uh, the parish chair retired, so I became the parish chair. Um, I'm an area extension forester that covers Beauregard, Calfishu, Allen, Jeff Davis, and sometimes Vernon <coughs> Parish. So if there's a county agent wants me to look at a tree, I'll be happy to because it's a good excuse to get out of the office. Uh, let's see, what else do I do? Well, I was telling Golden um, my uh, career had, had made some very unplanned but pleasant changes. Uh, they had some master gardeners that um, Robert had trained up and they wanted to do some master gardening up in Beauregard Parish and so we got started there. And then some gardeners were interested in beekeeping so I did some workshops and I was reading the evaluation and said we need to start a group so we got together and started a group and so uh, I'm really enjoying the master gardener program, the beekeeping program and I'm going to do slideshows, two short slideshows, one on how to get started in beekeeping if you're interested and then um, one on gardening for pollinators even if you don't want the, the bees or the pollinators you can certainly enable them to, to be around so let's get started I think I'll start with the beekeeping uh, slide first Now, let me cite, this is from Washington State. It's very helpful for our area. I'm going to, I should have made some uh, editorial changes because there's some things that are a little bit different from Louisiana. Uh, he, uh, he, this, the purpose of this slideshow is to provide inf information for people who want to know what it takes to get into beekeeping because, you know, it, maybe they're, they're on the border and they don't know which way to go. So we'll talk about the costs in terms of time and money, uh, the benefits. Uh, there's lots of people that keep bees. It's a hobby for some. They're, I know one beekeeper calls his bees his girls. You know, he's very fond of them. Uh, they're like a lot of you might are probably interested from a gardening perspective in the pollination. And then who doesn't like honey? That's probably the main thing that uh, beekeepers get, although they get some other things, wax, pollen. The propolis is just the beekeeper's word for bee glue. If there's a crack, if there's a crack the, the bees will seal it up. And they use propolis. Uh, relaxation, but you gotta start off being the calm type anyway. You might get stung, uh, but there is an upside to getting stung. People that get stung tend to have less problems with uh, a certain form of arthritis. So there's actually something called apiculture or um, apitherapy, which is people deliberately get bee stings for treatments. Back, back, back to that one. Is that a, uh, a thing that you develop permanently from bee stings or things that or do you have to keep current with getting stung to have it keep its uh, effectiveness? I don't know because basically you're asking if it's if it's the benefits are short term or long term. Right. And I don't know. I'm going to have to research that question. I, I, I used to keep bees years ago. So I was... Are you still limber? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's probably long term though. Like, like Joe is. All right. That's it. This cardboard, right there. Hey, and by the way, by the way, feel free to comment or ask questions because you know we're, you know, we're at the extension center. We can do all that sort of thing. Uh, but the, that's pollination's a big deal. Uh, in fact, there are beekeepers, commercial be beekeepers. Uh, that honey is a sideline and they sell or they rent their hives for pollination services. They'll 
There's 18 wheeler loads of bees that go to California for certain crops. Almonds. Almonds is the big one. Oh, by the way, let me, I got, let me tell you my almond joke. <laughs> one Christmas I gave my brother uh, a package of Louisiana pecans. He said, oh, I should give you some almonds. They grow in Northern California. And then he said, do you, you know where they grow almonds? They don't call them almonds. They drop the egg called almonds. And he said, do you know why they call them almonds up there? And I said, no. And he said, when they harvest them, they shake the L out of them. <laughs> no, y'all didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> that's my almond joke, and that's that snuck up on you. Yeah, they shake the L out of them. Um, the bees like a nectar source. Now, right here, this is blackberries. For us, it's the tallow tree. Beekeepers love the tallow tree. The uh, bees will go to the tallow tree, and if you're growing any cucurbits like watermelons, they'll fly right by it and go to the tallow tree. That's what they prefer. And by the way, they send out scout bees, and the scout bees come back and tell them where the nectar sources are. Uh, this looks like a uh, northeastern uh, management practice. They're talking about mason bees, and that looks like a mason bee. I don't know if we have mason bees around here. We do. We do. We do. We do. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a mason bee box. And if you're interested in promoting mason bees, maybe you could go online and Google a designs for this box. It looks like they're solitary insects, I'm not sure. Um, this is a, uh, if you want to keep hives for pollination, then you probably want just a few hives. Uh, there's less time. For the purposes of disclosure, I am an aspiring beekeeper. I'm going to buy my equipment this fall and see if I can get some bees and start you know, keep keeping bees. And my objective as a county agent is to have what I call goodwill honey. I want to give honey to the stakeholders like the police jurors and the school board members that do contribute to the Beauregard um, our, our stakeholders and they contribute some money to our program I and mean, certainly that's kind of what I'm wanting to do with that of course I want to, huh right that's very unkind um, <laughs> I, I, it's not to bribe them it's a really an act of gratitude because I, I do appreciate what they're doing for us sweet them yeah, yeah. So that's called goodwill honey all right um, high products honey that's the number one um, a yield of 40 pounds around here is, is good. And 12 pounds is a gallon. That's, that's approximate um, conversion there. There's some beeswax. Um, I know one of my beekeepers got 70 highs. He will accumulate the wax and his wife will make it into different products like candles, uh, some cosmetics and things like that. Uh, there is pollen. Uh, it's probably hard to gather, uh, but you got to be careful because pollen is a source of protein for bees, and if you take it away, it can uh, weaken your hive. Uh, we have plenty of tree sap, don't we? So the bees have no problem making propolis. Okay, here's what the time requirement would be. Uh, several hours setting up your site, you know, place siting your, your hives properly. Um, for me, I'm, 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 I've got a corner in my yard, and I've got to figure out how I'm going to control the grass because it's in a yard. Um, the bees don't like mowers and weed eaters, so I'm wanting, thinking about maybe putting down something to cover the grass. I don't know, maybe Roundup. Roundup's an herbicide. I don't think it's going to hurt the bees. It's an herbicide. Uh, then, during the uh, nectar season, you'd want to visit uh, weekly. Uh, you'll want to check for brood. If there's brood in there, the baby bees, then the queen is doing her job. And then you also want to check out your honey frames. Uh, there's a new beekeepers group. Uh, the Ag Center is hosting it. Um, I think they meet the second Tuesdays here. 
You'll have to check with Robert, but I think it's second Tuesdays. And then there's lots of reading. Um, you look at beekeeping sites. Uh, spraying time is installing the bees. Um, adding honey super summers. You check for general. Now here, the fall, we don't mess with the bees because if you stress them, we have a problem called a small hive beetle. Uh, we think uh, the hives are more susceptible to that. Uh, so we generally do not mess with the hive unless we think there's a good reason to go in and have a look. If there's, they look like they're ailing or something going on, then you probably uh, would want to go. And you can tell by how the bees are behaving outside on the little porch. That's about what the uh, cost is. Two hives are better than one. If one fails, then you have another one. Um, you, can, you can, you should compare, see how they're doing. You can swap frames. Um, my beekeepers, they generally avoid using the medication. They just, they don't want to do that. Um, I'm open to the idea. I mean, you know, if they're approved for that purpose, I'll, I'll go ahead. Um, you buy new equipment unless, yes ma'am? When you say medication, what are you talking about? Well, there's going to be a list of, like, fumagillin is a, uh, I think it's an antibacterial for a nosema, but I'm going to get to that in a little bit. Okay. Okay. Um, now, if you know of a beekeeper that's retiring, like, for instance, one of my beekeepers that I sold out, uh, the, the frames are getting too heavy. He was, he's certainly getting advanced in age. He sold it, um, but if... It's, you, you probably want to buy new or buy from somebody that's reputable. But sometimes these commercial beekeepers, they're just selling their junk. Okay? So um, be aware of that. Um, local supplier or mail order. I, up in my area, I've learned of several uh, hardware stores and ag supply stores that are starting to sell beekeeping equipment. I don't know who does it around here, except... Clyde Connor, who's an electrical contractor, he's a sideliner. I think he might have some equipment at his store on, um, I think it's is it Broad Street. Broad Street. Yeah. Okay. EpiPen. I don't think, I'm not sure that's the right price. That's uh, for anaphylactic shock. You know, it's strange. When I was in forestry school, one of my classmates was deathly allergic to bee stings. And I don't know why he was in forestry, because, you know, there's a lot of wasps and hornets and bees out in the woods. Uh, this this uh, slide talks about better bee incorporated and you get all that equipment to high bodies. Uh, the supers are the um, where the honey goes. The high bodies are for the brood. There's a top cover and there's an inner cover and a bottom board. And the entrance reducer is something you do in the winter to, to um, uh, control. The main thing is it makes it easier for the bees to defend against robber bees because uh, other bees will rob from a hive if it's weak. Uh, here's some of the basic equipment. The hive tool, very handy. It's more of a lever for prying loose frames that get propolized or glued. Smoker. Smoker's probably the most famous beekeeping accessory um, along with the helmet and veil. Those two things. Leather gloves, maybe. Um, I think you could get away with the uh, latex gloves because there's more sensitivity and there's a little bit of protection. Um, Varroa mites nationally are a big problem. They're a parasite. They're not as big a problem for us. As I mentioned earlier, the small hive beetle is. Um, we, if you have more than 10, Hives, it's ten dollars to register, and the registration is for bee health issues. It's not government overreach. The ag department, they not, don't they do this for other. They they check on the health of animals and crops, and the main thing is to keep diseases from causing economic damage. And it's the same for beekeeping. If they suspect that there is a uh, something called. Uh, American fowl brew, a bacterial disease, and they'll quarantine it because that could spread to other beehives. Bee suit, 
And when I get started, I think I'm going to, instead of getting a real D suit, I'm going to get a painter, you know, the white um, painters, the, the work clothes and paint, the white shirt, the white pants. I think I'll probably get that's probably cheaper than a bee suit. Now, you're asking about the diseases. Um, there's different treatments for varroas. They are external parasites. The tracheal mites are internal. They get into the uh, trachea of the bees, which is how bees breathe. The nocema. I said virus. Um, I thought it was. I'm not sure that's right. I'm going to have to work on the slideshow, but nocema, I think, is a a bacterial problem. Wax moths are more of a, if you're storing your frames, that's a problem. They never get into the hive. They don't really become that much of a problem. Generally, people start off with two to three packages, a package of two to three pounds of bees. Um, they come with empty pockets. Yes, sir? Yeah, let me make a comment. The gypsy wax moth, uh, I think will at least in my experience, we'll get into a hive. Yeah, I can uh, see that if it's a weak hive that doesn't have the protection. But they're not, the wax moth is after the wax. They're not after the brood. They're not after the honey. Uh, but they can cause damage to your uh, wax foundation. Uh, some beekeepers, like with package bees, they'll give them sugar water. Well, it's more like sugar syrup. One part water, one part sugar. Uh, the honey extractor, that, there are different types. Uh, you can get a high end that do a lot of frames. Um, your best bet would be to go to a beekeeper that has one and say on shares, uh, you know, spin the, uh, the frames. Electric fence, no kidding, we do have bears. Let me tell you my bear story. Uh, a few months ago, my pastor sent me a picture of uh, sow bear and cubs at a deer feeder. A trail camera caught them, and this was west of the Quincy. So somewhere along the Sabine River, there's bear habitat. So we do have bears in our general area. And I hate to disappoint you, but Winnie the Pooh lied. <laughs> Bears want the protein in the brood. They're not really interested in the honey. They want the protein. That's why they'll go into termite nests to eat the brood there too. They'll go bust open a log to eat the termites. And they cause a mess. Um, now this is a Washington thing. Uh, we don't do that. But we do have a Louisiana Beekeepers Association right there. And uh, I have a group that meets the first Monday, but since the first Monday fell on Labor Day yesterday, we're meeting next Tuesday. And then the Lake Charles Beekeepers will meet next Tuesday. Is that right, Robert? I think so. Uh, ours, Eric? ours meets on Monday. Huh? Ours meets on Monday. They meet the first Monday except this month, which fell on a Labor Day. So we're, we're meeting next Monday. You said Tuesday. Yeah, yeah you're right. I'm sorry. Next Monday. Southwest, next Tuesday, Lake Charles. Okay. Um, there's lots out there. One of my favorites is First Lessons in Beekeeping. Uh, it's by Dr. Keith Delapine. He is a beekeeping specialist at the University of Georgia. He got his entomology, a and entomology degree from LSU. This was a textbook in a recent uh, beekeeping class that I just finished up. And John was in that class. I'm hoping to do train the trainer classes to train people, give them my slides, you know, some of the things that I use, like there's a bank of test questions, um, things like that to help them administer a class. They don't have to, I'm trying to get it to be turnkey. So here, here's the thumb drive. You can do the program. This is what's in it. So hopefully we'll have more beekeeping. What we did, uh, what John attended, with, this was for me a trial to see how, see, I, I made some mistakes and I learned from them. Um, so it, overall it went well. Uh, here's some other sources, bsource.com. It's not a business. No, it is a business. But there is one 
that's, maybe forget the name of it, it's one of those dot orgs. Uh, if you want to learn more about Mason Bees, there's a, a link right there. Uh, suppliers, the Bees Knees, it's Snohomish, Washington. They, they, Man Lake, Man Lake's real popular because if you order more than $100 worth of supplies, the shipping's free. So my beekeepers really like Man Lake. It's up in Minnesota, uh, based in Minnesota, although I think they've had several warehouses in the United States. All right. Well, that is my first slideshow about honeybees. Now we're going to talk about, how am I doing for time? You're good. Okay.